welcome to today's video why some platforms thrive and others don't this is a review and analysis of a 2019 Harvard article published in the Harvard Business Review by two distinguished Harvard professors in the strategy section so today we're going to go through this strategery a la Harvard Business Review first conceptually what are we talking about second are these professors authoritative or are you going to leave wondering how did they get published I'll give you a hint they got published because they work at Harvard third how can this information actually help you in the real world and fourth how can we spice up this article and the details and make it more valuable so what are we talking about we're talking about network effect folks we're talking about what strengthens or weakens your business and the position as it relates to competition relative to external and intrinsic stimulus boil that down for me it means how do you make your company stronger how do you build a network that helps you grow how do you not lose in business well, simply, you understand and embrace and adapt to the effects of the network effect. This is paramount, especially in the digital world and across digital platforms. There's five main points made in this article about the strength of network effect, network clustering, risk of disintermediation, vulnerability to multi-homing, and network bridging. All five of these topics are elaborated in length in the article and with specific examples so are these harvard professors genius or moronic well in 2019 the harvard business review decided to publish this article both of the authors are distinguished harvard business school mba professors with focuses in technology and operations management now you'll see that right there on your slide. What you might be wondering is how could they not be genius? They're professors, they teach at Harvard. Well, they utilize examples that were at least 10 years old. In their own words, we'll get to in the next slide, it was well known. They give contradictory examples, specifically in the network clustering. They use Airbnb and they say that it's not susceptible to network clustering like uber however they avoid craigslist calisthenics home away it took me five seconds to find localized networks that offer competition to airbnb the authors fail to recognize that the network clustering effect is two ways both from the business to the consumer and the consumer to the business there's no recognition of regulatory environment in this article number of the examples are in the Chinese market using Tencent, Tencent, excuse me, Alibaba and Uber and the exit from China of Uber. What they don't discuss and they don't give any credit to is the unfair market that exists in China. The Chinese market has a government controlled economy where they put in regulation and controls to drive external companies out. If they can't control the company, they don't want you in China. It's very simple and well documented. And none of that is discussed in this article. The authors give all the credit for the successes and failures in China to network effect and not the real world. The article also lacks posits. They don't give you any specificity to cross application. They don't tell you what this means to you. They don't help you understand how to go apply this. It's simply a regurgitation of well-known and well-documented examples of digital platforms that have succeeded. I don't think this article is genius. I certainly don't think it's moronic. I do think this article is lacking the why. Why would you read this article? What can you gain from it? My time's valuable just like yours. I only want to read something that is going to help me succeed in business and this article is not it. 
So, what can we take from this article that is useful? Let's reality television check this. How does it really work? Well, it talks in successful disruptors begin in a niche. They exploit a weakness in the network effect, and then they use that to grow and pivot to alternative revenue streams. Those pivots should strengthen your position. You should use that pivot to increase your original market position and then strengthen your pivot. And when you pivot a second and a third time, you should be aware of your other divisions, your other efforts, and they should be complementary. To that point, if you don't see a synergy, create it. The article talks at length about Tencent and WeChat and the Chinese companies that have utilized their successes to expand into ancillary markets and then use their dominance from the original market to dominate those second markets. One could make the argument that is the Chinese economic model about how to exploit Western markets. Lastly, you should embrace self multi homing and de incentivize your customer multi homing. What is multi homing, you might be asking? I did the same myself. Multi homing is the use of multiple digital platforms. So when you embrace it yourself, your business should be on every effective digital platform. And it's worth chasing the new ones. There's always going to be a new MySpace, if you remember, a new Facebook, a new TikTok. Your business should evaluate and adopt those new digital platforms. You should de-incentivize your customer multi-homing by offering your services everywhere. It doesn't matter if they want to buy on Amazon, eBay, your website, the retail store. You should make it easy for them. Now, how do you get defeated? The article doesn't really talk about this, but it gives a number of examples that we can extrapolate. So disrupt and then grow content. Rely on your scale so when you disrupt and you grow, you think you've made it. You think you're untouchable. I like to use the Kodak example here. You cannot rely on your scale. There's going to be another disruptor. And you need to disrupt yourself. That's how you succeed. You cannot fear and fixate on disintermediation. If you're providing a service, you cannot fear your customers going directly to your suppliers. You may make it so they don't have that incentive by offering them a user experience that trumps the savings. Make it easy for them to do business with you and you don't have to fear disintermediation. And absolutely don't underappreciate network effect. So many companies have done this and so many companies have failed because of that. Don't make that mistake. So lastly, we're gonna talk about spice, which makes the world nice. These authors in 2019 missed the opportunity to make this article matter to you, me, and the rest of the world. I suspect it was published in the Harvard Business Review because both distinguished authors worked at Harvard. I think it's easier to get published at Harvard when you work there. Even for 2019, the authors recognized in the article, quote, the importance of network effects is well known. This article offers you no subject or content that isn't well known and well documented. It is a regurgitation of what is well known and well documented. So I want to give you two ideas how you could make this article better, Harvard. I want to give you, the reader of the article, food for thought. First, you need to jujitsu that stuff. Small businesses need to consider social media. This article, to me, spoke to the plight of small businesses, and in particular, those small businesses that don't embrace the digital trend and don't understand network effect and how to grow your business. 
you don't have to be the next Uber, but if you want to be the next successful pizza delivery shop from the corner, you're going to have to have a social media presence. That's a fact of life. You have to embrace your users and your user experience. It doesn't matter if your users are ordering pizza or hailing a ride in a car. So you need to embrace your disintermediation. You need to recognize that and you need to find a way to be the disruptor to create the disintermediation between a market inhabitant and yourself. Create a user experience that makes it easier to order pizza from your pizzeria than it is from Little Caesars or from Domino's. That one's going to be hard to beat. Domino's has a wonderful app. If you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. You need to build your network bridges. You need to have your business on the different networks. You need to have a Facebook account. You need to have an Instagram account. You need to have a YouTube account, which, oh, by the way, you should subscribe to my YouTube. You need to use those networks to build bridges, referring customers from your social media, your Facebook to your YouTube, your YouTube to your TikTok, your TikTok to your Twitter. Uh, scratch that last one. Twitter is dying. It is a not a platform you need to worry about. But use your networks to amplify your voice. Use your followers on one to build on the other. Use those presences on those digital platforms to drive business to your website or to your store or to your pizzeria. That's what I mean by build your network effect. Or that's what I mean by building your network bridges. And lastly, use that network effect to drive your scale. As your networks grow, you'll scale your business. Don't rely on scale to drive your network effect. It's never too early to get your social media and your digital platforms amplifying your presence in your market. That's something the authors could have talked to you about. They chose not to. The authors could have addressed alternative industries in their article. They chose not to. They used well-known and well-documented, well-researched and well-reported examples of digital platforms. The question is not about the things that everyone already knows and has read everywhere for the last 20 years. The question is why does that matter to me today? So the authors could have looked at alternative industries. I'm going to use aerospace. I don't know why I picked aerospace. I just did. SpaceX is a disruptor. If you look at the effect that they've had on Lockheed Martin and Sierra Nevada and Ball and Boeing and Northrop and ATK, ATK doesn't even exist anymore because they got bought multiple times because of the effect of the disruptor known as SpaceX. Bigelow Aerospace, this is a lesser well-known. They're doing amazing work on inflatable, space inflatable habitats and space inflatables. They are leading the technology that will eventually lead to colonization on the moon and Mars. They're doing that through disruption in a specialized niche. Blue Origin, most people have heard of Blue Origin. If you haven't, let me give you a hint. They've done basically everything SpaceX has done, but they did it first. The difference is they didn't toot their own horn. They made an achievement and they went to do the next. So the authors from Harvard, as distinguished as they are, could have looked at other industries and given you examples in order to help you pivot, in order to help you comprehend how this matters to you as a business owner, as an executive, as a manager. They chose not to. So with that, I'll close. Would I recommend that you read this article? Well, not really, because I just, if you made it this far into the video, I pretty much summed it up for you. If you didn't watch this video, it might be worth your while, but I think about 30 seconds on Google about how to scale and grow your business in the digital world will lead to much better and more insightful articles than this. So with that, like and subscribe. Don't forget the subscription to our YouTube, our Instagram, our Nerd Book, everywhere.